Hello again, and welcome back to the channel. I have a real treat for you today. I'm going to be fitting Schwalb's new Taki Chan 2.4 tyre. I've heard a lot of good things about this tyre, so I've decided I'm going to give it a try and replace my old Magic Mary. The tyre is available in a choice of five variations. In an Addix Ultra Soft compound you can choose a downhill, a gravity or a trail type. Or in an Addix Soft compound, either a gravity or a trail type. While the Ultra Soft tyre offers the most grip, it's been found that they can wear out pretty quickly when compared to the soft version. So it's a good idea to bear that in mind when you choose the tyre variation. I've chosen an Addict Soft Super Trail Evo version here because it best suits the type of riding that I mostly do. The Taki Chan is a narrower tyre than I'm used to riding and has a shallower tread height. The squared off lugs are ramped on the trailing edge which helps reduce rolling resistance and are squared on the leading edge to improve braking. Firstly, let's get this old 2.6 Magic Mary off the rim. Removing the valve core is the quickest and easiest way of deflating the tyre. I squeeze the walls of the tyre into the centre of the rim to make it easier to get the bead off over the rim. Using the tyre glider is the easiest way to remove tyres. I put a link in the description for this excellent tool. Pulling off the tyre reveals the old muck-off rim tape I used when I initially fitted this Magic Mary a year or so ago. Normally I would renew this tape, but it looks to still be in good condition, so after a bit of a tidy up, it's going to be okay to reuse. A quick spin of the axle tells me that the bearings are in good condition and don't need to be changed. The Taki Cham was developed with the Commensal Muckoff team over the 2021-22 downhill season. During that time, riders using this tyre have claimed over a dozen World Cup downhill wins, including several by a Maori Piron on his way to the 2022 overall World Cup title. When compared to the Magic Mary, this tyre is 8% lighter, its shoulder blocks are 20% stiffer, and while there's a 10% increase in the distance between the centre lugs, there's also fewer of them. Putting all of this together helps the rider maintain higher average speed, increases cornering speed and aids acceleration out of the corners, 
gaining a significant margin over the competition. The brilliant tyre glider comes to the rescue again, making short work of squeezing the tyre over the rim without causing any damage to either the tyre or the wheel. You can probably see a few nicks and scrapes on my rim. It's evidence of the damage I did to them previously when I used to use tyre levers. I like to line up the writing of the tyre with the markings on the wheel. My OCD wouldn't have it any other way. Flipping the wheel over and getting the bead of a brand new tyre to locate under the rim can be a difficult task. As you can tell from the jump cut here, this tyre proved to be no exception. When you reach the point where you have the majority of the bead located under the rim, I find it's easier to squeeze the bead down into the centre of the rim and into the gully that's under the rim tape. This gives you the few millimetres of slack you need to get the final section of bead up and over the rim. The tyre glider again here proves it's worth getting the job done. Pulling the tyre bead so it sits near the outside edge of the rim on either side of the valve helps to pre-seat the tyre when I tap the wheel on the bench. I've had some comments about me being able to inflate the tubeless tyres using only a hand or a foot pump. I find that the tapping of the tyre in this way helps me to do this. I like to inflate the tyre initially without the valve core fitted, just to seat the tyre fully onto the rims. Stan's No Tubes is my go-to tyre sealant. I've put a link in the description. I find injecting it into the tyre through the valve is the cleanest and most accurate way to get the sealant in. I normally put about 100 millilitres in and then refit the valve core. The final inflation here is now an easy straightforward task with all the hard work done in previous steps.
I like to inflate my tyres up to between 30 and 35 psi. I put tyre sealant, after inflation, down in between the insides of the rim and the wall of the tyre. I've had some comments questioning the validity of this step, and I understand that it seems unnecessary, but if you've ever experienced tyre burping, this step helps prevent that from happening. Thanks for joining me today in the workshop for this tyre swap. Like and subscribe if you've enjoyed it. Stay tuned for a future video where I ride and test this tyre to see how it runs.